Welcome back to the Dungeon Master's Corner. I am joined once again by Nicole Summers to discuss one of my finer screw-ups when running Princes of the Apocalypse. It happens to us all, so let's dive in and learn from my failures. Welcome to another episode of Dungeon Master's Corner. My name is Brian. And I'm Nicole. And today we are talking about when a DM misreads a rule. So I created, this is again our, our Princes of the Apocalypse campaign, and this is in regards to an NPC that I am very fond of, some of my players are very fond of. She was amazing and terrifying. Yeah, some, some of them had some mixed feelings, though. <laughs> For good reason. Well, I always wanted to... I never really played a sorcerer. Sorcerer is not ever something I ever wanted to play. Until um, Titus, I think was his name. Uh, so there was a podcast called Drunks and Dragons. It's now called Greetings Adventurers. They're absolutely fantastic people. I got to meet them once. It was very exciting. Love them. They're, they're fantastic. And Titus Harper. There we go. His name is Titus Harper. And he was a storm sorcerer. And I heard storm sorcerer. And I'm like, that sounds so much cooler than dragon or wild magic. I want to play one. And I never really got the chance. Because you were DMing. So, I was always the, the forever DM. You know, curse the forever DM. <laughs> so when Gina, uh, the, the player who played Henry got connected to the air cult. I gave each of them a connection to one of the cults. I decided that for the air cult, of course, a storm sorcerer would fit in very well there. And thus, Rosette was born. And I built her... Uh, she she was... She was one of my babies for this one. She, Feynman, and, um, and Karis were probably my three most favorite to play in that campaign. Unfortunately, sorcerers are a little confusing. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I, I mean, we did a whole episode where we talked about, you know, wizard's not that confusing. It's it's a lot of work, but it's not that confusing. At least it's straightforward as long as you read. It's pretty straightforward. E even reading the sorcerer, I misread things. And it, it, I didn't find this out for a couple, until a couple of like weeks or months ago at this point. I'm pretty sure, um, who is it that... Uh, Isn't it Jeremy uh, Crawford? Jeremy Crawford, yeah. So Jeremy Crawford mentioned something about uh, the twinning spell. Or the twinning... Um... Uh, Metamagic ability. Yes. Twinning a spell. And our friend Tom uh, plays a sorcerer quite frequently. Mentioned, you know, I, I wanted to take this spell, but I couldn't do it because twinning it wouldn't work. And I went, I've done it. And he's like, it doesn't work. And we went in, we read uh, the book, we read the spell, we found something from Crawford. Like, oh, and no. <laughs> the worst part about this is the fact I almost TPK'd you guys with this. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. So they were, you were infiltrating, this was the air cult at this point. Mm -hmm. And it was our second time, like we had done Feathergale Spire and it was like the first part of the, the dungeon with the, with the air cult. The mega dungeon portion, the deep underground part. Mm hmm. The elemental, well, it wasn't we even, we as didn't deep even as the get elemental. That far yet, because this was, it was still relatively early. Yeah, and I think you guys were in the water for some reason, leading we up were, to a door. You're like, we were crossing a bridge to go into like the next part, and like she blocked us from the bridge and attacked, right. and then we fell into the water. Right, and they they fell into the water, and there was a waterfall, and. And I sat there going, she would, she would fight hardcore. She would fight. And one of the biggest dangers I've noticed as a DM is there's a lot to keep track of. And something I realize I never actually know are your hit points. I, I tease you all the time because Menowin's hit points were just so low. She's just a squishy little wizard. A little glass can. Yeah. But like, I... Yeah, I could not even tell you, like, where Thok or or Henry's, or even Thamans, and I played Thamans, I couldn't tell you where their hit points were. 
Like, I know Tizel, who wasn't there at the time. Uh, I, she's a barbarian. She ended in the 200s somewhere because she was a monster. Oh, yes. But, um, in the best of ways. It was dangerous. And I even think that, because um, Vega, our healer, was with us at the time, but his player was absent from that session, too. So he wasn't even there. Yeah, so... So they hit the water, and I'm like, she would do this, and I twinned chain lightning at them. So I targeted one with one, one with the other, and then it arced and crisscrossed, and it hit uh, multiple characters got, uh, or one character got hit more than once, that kind of thing. And it dropped all of them. And I didn't realize it was going to do that. Um... I think I hand waved it where you got you were fished out and and taken prisoner, instead. Yep. And we got to speak with Erisi Kalinoff. Yeah, so I didn't TPK them that way because I immediately knew it wasn't fair. Whatever I just did was not fair, but I didn't get why. Um, my reading of the spell it says you know you hit a target with the spell. And then it arcs off of that target and hits three new targets. So it feels targeted, but it's not. Apparently it's not. So, so the, like a few months ago, we figure all this out. And it's like, I could just feel the heads turning to look at me like you, you did this to us. <laughs> and to be fair, I broke the rule again, but I broke the rule again on purpose. I knew I was breaking the rule on this one. I had her twin fireball to do it, uh, to do something elsewhere, but at that point they were fighting kind of on the same side for something, and this was off in the distance. She did it to enemies that were just kind of more like props than actual enemies. It was very cinematic. Yeah, I felt for cinema's purposes, break the rules, but when you can TPK your players with a character that's a level higher than them, maybe... In one go, maybe don't do that. <laughs> uh, I still remember after we we spoke with after Karis, not Karis, Rosette, TPK'd or nearly TPK'd us with that, and we spoke with Arisi and we got let go. I remember that Rosette had stuck something in Henry's pocket. It was after Henry had lost his eye. It was you know glass eye for shape, eye patch for looks. I still remember that. Yeah, she, um, even after he tried to stab her, she, she did love her little brother in spite of everything. Kind of, kind of makes her or their ending a little sadder at that point. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, that again is a story for another time. <laughs> I think, um, I think the lesson on this one is pretty clear, though, one thing that I would like to point out, I, I'd been playing this game. God, I, I played in 3.5 for a very short period in college, but 5e is really where I played the most. And I feel kind of bad for what I did there, but not really, because it worked out. You guys are fine. You're not dead. Not from that. Not from that. You, you died from other things. That was just poor character build. Yeah. Ten constitution. <laughs> but you're not going to learn the whole book. You, you should try to learn the book, but you're not going to learn the whole book. You're not going to know every nuanced rule. And you really don't have to. But w when something that big happens, roll with it. Figure out how to, how to spin it. If it's a legitimate TPK, if they actually deserve it let them die but when you get that feeling i may have made a mistake listen to it find an in-story reason why it didn't happen or or why it happened the way it did but don't let them die kind of thing because i i loved your characters i did and if they all died in battling one of the princes i would have left you dead yeah because then it would have been a death we earned because we went down fighting yeah, rather than me messing up a rule or misreading a rule or... To be fair, I thought I read the rule and it said, this is a targeted spell, so do it. It 
still probably would have dropped a couple of us, even without okay. twinning it. This is very true. And to this day, I actually have not ever really played another sorcerer. I don't, I don't think I've picked up sorcerer again since Rosette. Mostly because they're just so, so complicated. They're so weird. Kudos to those who can just like main sorcerer and that's their thing. Good for you. Yeah, that that's that's, that's impressive to me. Yeah, it's <laughs> impressive. I mean, I know people who like anything above fighter is just too hard. You know, hit with stick. But like, I I have to say we we play complicated characters: wizards, warlocks, bards. I play a blood hunter, bards. But like, I still think a sorcerer is more complicated. Yeah, a sorcerer is definitely way more complicated. <laughs> But yeah, so that 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 was my takeaway from that. It's uh, learn as much as you can, but don't beat yourself up for mistakes because we all make them, and sometimes they're really rough. But they are always memorable. Anytime the entire party almost dies is pretty memorable. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Dungeon Master's Corner. I have been Brian. And I've been Nicole. If you'd like to support us, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash reliablychaotic. For just 25 cents a day, you can change the life of an adventurer unfairly struck down by an uneducated Dungeon Master's twin spell. You can also drop us a line on Twitter at reliablychaotic. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope to see you in our next episode. Thank you for joining us. Bye! Bye!